Drew York Show, live from the ISO Radio Studio in Toronto. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I think it might be just golden hour now. You can tell by the light on my face. Um, I have a really special guest today, somebody that I'm really excited to have on the show and somebody that I've had a tremendous amount of not only just admiration, but a lot of like respect for um, over the past couple of years. Um, Devante, please come join me on the couch. Dude, thank you for doing this. Of course, I love How are you feeling today? I feel great. I feel amazing. I feel chill still. Yeah. I went to the gym, worked on some music earlier. Smoked some weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just chilling. It's like a time of celebration, I guess, right now, just because you have like new music out. So it's like, you're like feeling good. Honestly, yes and no, but I've been celebrating since the Raptors won. And like <laughs> we all kind of yeah, have. <laughs> this week was the first week that I've been feeling like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Gain like ten pounds, you know. <laughs> well, my so bank account was getting like just slowly fucked, like that whole time. Slowly, my shit went quick, <laughs> quick. My, my shit went quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just started working out again, you know, and trying to get really focused and trying to like. I've been feeling like, <clears throat> you know, pressure to like shoot a new music video for. Um, so one of the songs off the new album, but I also have like real so many songs that I have this urge to just release too. You know, I've just so I've been feeling kind of anxious about that and just trying to, you know, chill and figure out a plan of attack, I guess. Um, I want to ask you about um, something that I came, I was thinking about on my way here mm. was when I first started getting into like um, working in like entertainment kind of stuff, like, you know, doing photography and like that kind of stuff. Um, I found it hard to like adjust to like that lifestyle, mm. you know, cause it's like, there's like free drinks and there's like parties all the time. And like people are yeah. saying, come through, I got you on guest list, that kind of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I know that obviously like, being like the book talent or like being an artist, that's like a little slightly different thing. Um, I wonder if like though, um, running with like your family's crowd and like your cousin's crowd and like. If that, if you had to adjust to that, no, because I've been doing that my whole life. You know, I've been going to hang out. You mean as far as like their lifestyle? Yeah. Well, so you mean like being treated really well all the time? You know, I feel like that's something like I have slowly had to like as that kind of happened for me. I feel like I really had to slowly adjust to that because it was like hard to like not just had to like party all the time or just like give into that all the time. Okay, I know what you mean. I guess I know what you mean. Um, honestly, no, because I've been partying since I was like a kid. Like my parents are only 20 years older than me. So like I'll be going out with them, you know, and I'm a monster. I look big. So I would always be Word. looking older. So my parents would be like, what? This is lit. Like take me out with them, you know, from a little kid. So like I've been partying, been performing, you know, with adults, like since I was like 13, you know, so going to like clubs and sneaking in like I was eight, 19 or whatever. <clears throat> so... I don't know, like all this kind of lifestyle is not new to me. This is my lifestyle. Like the really to adjust more so is accepting it that like this is my lifestyle. What the heck? Why 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 is this always been like this? Why for my whole life I've been doing these kind of things, you know? It's a balance though, like, you know, that's not the only kind of lifestyle I've seen. So I guess it makes me appreciate like both of them, you know, and like just accept it for what it is. Like shit, sometimes you party, sometimes you gotta work, sometimes you got nothing, you bored, freaking feel like no one in the world wants to talk to you and you're a loner. Sometimes you're the most popular person and you got bad things and sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, did you yeah, did that work ethic, was that ever something you had to like um find in yourself or is that something that was sort of like Still is. Yeah. Every day. It's hard to go to the gym. It's hard to like, you know. It's hard. There's some days that it's like I don't want to do sh nothing. I'm just I just want to be in my thoughts, you know, and just sit down. And there's some days that yo, what are you doing? You got no time to waste in this life. Like get up and go to the gym. Get up, go to the studio, work on music, you know. So it's like always like a tug of war of balance in my mind, you know, trying to figure out the best. Always like in my mind, I'm just trying to figure out what's the best thing I could do in my life and my time right now to help me get to what I want to do, you know, and. Then it's like, okay, I know what I want to do, or I know how I, I know what I need to do, you know? And it's just like fighting, you know, that urge to like, 
all right, do you want to do it right now? Or like, do you want to do something else? You know? Because it's like, when you lock in, you can't like lock in for a little bit. You got to lock in, you know? So it's like, you got to really sacrifice that time, you know? Um, I wanted to wa I wanted to know how early um, music was a part of your life because I know that you've been producing and rapping for like quite a long time now. Yeah. Um, music's been a part of my whole life, like my whole life. I really just kind of took it serious around 13, you know, started going to the studio with my friends and uh, started working on music recording, you know, writing my own songs, figuring out buying beats, you know, one of the first beats that I bought was from Rich Kid, actually. You know? From Rich Kid? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Do you remember how old you were when you bought that? How old I was? Yeah. Um, probably 15, 14. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, like, back to what I was saying, I did, like, this show in London, Ontario. There was a girl named Camouflage, and she, um, I guess one of her friends was, you know, friends with uh, Rich Kid or whatever. So they had sent me a pack of beats. I didn't know. This is my first time really getting into this. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, sick. You know, of course, I looked up to Rich Kid's production at the time, you know, like, you know, he produced some of my favorite records, you know, in Toronto with yeah, Drake, he produced on every, every Socrates, legend. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, that sound was just amazing. So I got a whole bunch of beats. So I'm like, okay, sick. So I'm going to rap on one. I figured out one that I really felt like I killed. Whatever. I sent it to him. I got no response. <clears throat> so then I put out the song because, I don't know, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? You know? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it was a fire song. So I put it on my album. He hit me up like, yo, what's going on? You know, he never told me he was going to put it out, blah, 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 blah. And I got to, you know, I had to pay him for the beat. And then that also kind of helped push me into, like, producing because I'm like, ain't nobody about to do that to me again. Like, you know, why would you give me beats and tell me I got to pay for them? Like, that's weird to yeah. me, you know? <laughs> at the time. But, yeah, like... at the time. I'm like, what? You know? <laughs> like, damn, you know? So, I'm like, I don't ever want to do that. I, I was like, I had to, like take my money and then Christmas present money and like my birthday money and do all that to pay for that beat, you know? Like, That's <laughs> so such I'm a funny like, story. Yeah. But I'm happy because I guess I own the master, so I should redo the beat. I should redo, like, you know, but that song is fire. I got to check it out. Do you think Rich Kid knows that you had to take all your birthday money and your Christmas money and all your fun? <laughs> do you think he knows that? I don't know. He might know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Damn, man. <laughs> But yeah, bro, so like that kind of helped me push me into producing where I was like, I ain't about to do this. So I downloaded Free Loop, started making beats, made a song called My Thing, recorded it, um, then just kind of worked on it from there, you know, just kept going. But I played football too, so mm, I played football like really good and really competitively. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So then after when it came to like university time, I turned down my football scholarships and Chose to go do music, you know. You turned down football scholarships. Yeah, I was the number one left tackle in Canada, so like, could have kind of went anywhere, you know. I need a fact check on that. I don't know about that. Google <laughs> number that. Number one, bro. Let's, let's put the link right here. Going like, there's like a Canada football. You probably just Google it, you know. But like, there's like a Canada football like ranking book that came out every year, and like it had all the number one positions in it, you know. Wow. My name was right there. Wow. Left tackle, baby. Was that like, did that take some time to make that decision or was that something you knew? I went back to school for like 13th year, they called it, I guess. You know, like you could do grade 13, grade 13. Uh, I guess at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I did half a semester. I, I played football. Um, we went undefeated. We never lost one game and won the Metro Bowl, uh, which is like the whole Canada um, or Ontario, whatever, championship. And then. I didn't go back to class after that. And then I just was like, all right. I flew out to all like these different schools like Regina, like uh, what's it called, Bishops and uh, Quebec and, and like, you know, York, University of Toronto, all these different schools. And then, um, and then I'm like, you know what? I don't love it. I'm just really good at it. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna just work. I worked in like a factory, to try to make money, you know, like like unloading big 18 wheeler trucks of like um, snowmobile and dirt bike parts and stuff like that. Like freaking in like a factory, like dust. And my manager was super racist, but he was Fuck. like so small. I wanted to beat him up, but I couldn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go to school for music, and then I chose to go to Metalworks and. Oh, and Saga. Yeah. 
then I dropped my moniker at the time, D Bones, and I just was like, you know, I'm the Bones. Yeah, you know, the uh, someone did tell me that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then now I'm the Vivante, normally, who I am, you know, my birth certificate. Normally. And said, I'm just going to produce all my own music, record it all, mix it all. I went to school, learned it all. And then, yeah, I've been just doing it since pretty much. When did, um, when did Woe come about? Woe came about in high school, like, like deep bones times, I guess, you yeah. know? Like, um, it was we over everything, and then I kind of wanted to make it more positive, and like, why are we over everything? And so You're working, you know, <laughs> you know, working on excellence <laughs> until we over everything was really the reasoning, you know. I had to put us injustice behind it. So then, yeah, I got that, and yeah, I just been doing that since for probably 2012, maybe 2000. And just stuck it. Yeah, and then you know, so now we're here. That's crazy. I mean, like. There's no way that, like, in high school you were picturing, like, that being, like, a part of a collaboration on, like, an Under Armour shoe and being part of a story on, like, a... Yeah. No, it's just actually for, like crazy. Just for, like, the messaging. Even if it, even if it, even, like, imagine it even didn't say, whoa. Like, just, like, imagine it didn't. Mm -hmm. Even if, to think that that's, like, inspired something, like, so big. Yeah. That, like, there's, like, mad kids out there with that on their feet. It's crazy. <laughs> Yo, bro, I have a shoe in the store. It's actually nice. I thought about it the other day. Like, man, I guess I do have my own kind of inspired shoe. Like, Travis Scott has his Jordan 1s, you know? I have my Curry 6. Like, that's actually pretty dope. This is the shirt that goes with it, actually. This is the Woe Under Armour shirt. Oh, say word. Yeah, it's just like the Woe Under Armour. On the back, it has, like, like my work on excellence quote. Oh, it says fucking Devontae in the back. Yeah, it's my Devontae logo. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a picture. I'll show you guys. That's crazy. Yeah. But, wow. Uh, um, it's super dope, you know? So, I don't know. I did, though. I kind of did know it was going to be like like that. I've always felt like anything I do, I'm bound to be successful. I always thought I was going to be the most successful person I'm, I could be, you know? So, yeah. I still do. You know, it's just... And not this, I don't know, like, just, you know, you got to define what success is to you, you know? Yeah. I'm not the richest person yet. That's what I'm working on. But I'm very successful in what I do. I think everything I set my mind to do, mostly I achieve, you know? So it's crazy to see you work on excellence and woe, like, so big. But at the same point, it's like, all right, sick. What else can we do, you know? How, how can we do something bigger, you know? What else, where else can we take it? I was going to inspire. Yeah, if you, it's it's funny. I think it takes like a bit of a god complex sometimes if you want to like really like turn the things in your head into like things that you're like in front of you, mm -hmm. you know, because you really have to believe that it's like worth like making. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's like sometimes the hardest part. Nah, for sure. It's all about. You kind of have to have that like it's just blind faith of just yeah. like this is gonna be sick. Bro, that's it's like how do you how do you get to the end of making something that's gonna so so amazing? You know, like. That's 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 it all right there. All boils down to faith for me, you know. Like without that, I would go nuts. Like there's, <laughs> I would go crazy, bro. If I didn't have faith, I feel like I'm protected by my purpose, you know. So it's like a faith in God, or is it just like a general faith? Faith in God, bro. Yeah. Everything I do is, you know, I feel is through the strength of God. So everything I do is for God. And not to say I'm perfect, you know. And yeah, I don't do only godly things. You know, I am human, so I act as human too. So. But really, I give all thanks to the, to God for sure. Like, I, I don't know. This whole project, Son of Dawn, is, is really my perspective of, like, my talking, you know, to God and, and God talking to me and, like, my relationship with God through different, like, perspectives, you know, like, raise my soul, like, talking, you know, are you ready, things like that. Jadu means God do magic. Back home is kind of like a, a reflection of, like, all the positive things, you know, that I feel that I need to do on that side. And then Head Gone was more like the opposite, you know, where it's all about the craziness of the mind and the lust and the you know, demons and the, just the, the, the beast, I guess you would call it, you know, like yeah. the, the flesh as, as we are, like what we- I It's mean, interesting, I was listening to, uh, I was listening to District Vibe mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. It's so crazy to think like the, the difference in sound between District Vibe and Son of Dawn. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's like the contrary, it's like the day and night, you know, like literally it's like, how did you feel about it? Honestly. The new project? Yeah. I like it. It's not what I expected at all. Mm -hmm. Like just going into like thinking like what's a Devante project gonna sound like? Yeah. Not what I thought at all. 
And so at first, I think I was really thrown off. I was just like, whoa, what? what? But then, like, you listen back, and, like, those beats are sick. Thanks, bro. Like, those are crazy. I think the last song is my favorite. Yeah, so, like, those are, like, on dish vibe. That's more, that's, I think that's also more, like, Devante that I'm, li- like, I'm listening for, I'm, like, looking for. That's, like, you know. Yeah, no, and that's what it is, like. This Son of Dawn was like, I guess, like extensions of like the finding myself, the Godspeed, you know, with Joey Badass, the Keeping Six, like th- songs like that, you know, that's what this album was like. And then like the Bear Tings, the Shawn Michaels, the the Ends, um, songs like that were more like head gone, you know, like Haunted or whatever. So like there's different like extensions, you know, I, I don't think you'll ever find two of the same songs. Like creatively, how I just create is like, I always want to make something new and fresh that I haven't thought of or I haven't felt before, I haven't heard, or I haven't, like, you know, ever, like, by anybody, you know? So that's kind of, like, how I push myself to be better and make my music just, like, evolve like that. And that's why I feel like Son of Dawn is so different. But, like, I still have so much more, like, other vibes. Like, you know, like, the the kind of vibes that everybody wants to hear. Like, that was just something that I feel like the people needed to hear. Like, this is not something that I feel like... It's for the pop world or whatever you want to say, you know, that's going to be by the masses. But I feel like the masses do need to hear this and feel this. And that's obviously my goal, you know. So, um, yeah. I heard Bear Tings at a party the other night. So that's there's dope. DJs out there still running it. It's a classic. You can run that like 20 years from now. <laughs> that definitely ranks in like the, you know, like the list of like Toronto rap records. Sick. That definitely would be in there, it's like in certified there. for sure. Yeah. It has to be. Stamped. Official. At this point, you know, it has to be. I was talking to Cardinal yesterday. Yeah. I ran into him, and I was telling him I would do this today, and he was asking, you like, what should I ask Devante? Mm-hmm. And he just, like, stopped for a second. He, like, didn't know what to say. And he's like, you know, Devante could host a talk, like, a host a show, like, mm-hmm. like Action Bronson. Word. Like, a host a travel show around the world. Like, I need talking to, to different that. people. Let's set up that sponsor. Let's figure it out. He just said out. you could, like, he's like, you, you're just somebody that could, like, connect with anybody, you know, that you're going to find, like, a middle ground with anybody. Mm. Especially in that debate, you, like, have a unique perspective, like, traveling around the world. Mm-hmm. He said you're just, like, a centered individual, you know. Word. That's love, man. Shout out to Carter now. My big bro right there. Let's see. Yeah, he, I was trying to, I was asking him when you guys met, and he, like, couldn't remember. He said that you might have been brought down to, like, um, like, a record label office or something. Yeah. He didn't remember. How did I meet Cardinal? I forget stuff. I know I have it in my brain, but I can't remember it right now. Yeah. yeah, I remember, oh, well, yeah. That's a story for another day. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. I have to know about mixing the Head Gone album at Kevin Durant's house. Yeah. That's like. It was crazy. Was well, just like the craziest like sentence to read. Yeah. Because I don't think it's just people wouldn't people wouldn't like if they people like you'd be like oh I'm like recording the album here or I'm like oh I've got like blah blah, blah or I'm playing the album or you know but like to be mixing it it's just funny. Yeah, it's actually crazy. That was a, such an amazing experience. It was, like, was, mi- was it you were mi- was this you were mixing or somebody else was mixing at his high spot? I spot. Yeah, someone else named Raleigh. He uh, Kevin Durant introduced me to him. So he uh, works with KD a lot for music, you know. They work together, and then so one time I met KD at um, my cousin Aisha, her restaurant in in the Bay, and then he invited me over to the house to work on some music, and then you know I met the engineer there, Riley. You know, we all linked up, and then that that night that I went over there, I actually produced and recorded Bless, and then uh, Kevin there I, like jumped on it, and he did a verse on it, you know, like exclusive though, it's not out. And then uh, just sitting on a hard drive. Sitting on a hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> and then. You think he's ever gonna see the light of day? Godspeed. I don't know. Who knows? Eh? Who knows? He only he knows. <laughs> 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 only he Someone's gonna acquire it and leak the fuck out of that. <laughs> Somehow. I want to hear it again. <laughs> but yeah, so it was insane. It was on top of like this mountain on Oakland. There was like hummingbirds. There was like <laughs> yo, it was crazy. It was this big white mansion, bro. There's a little studio in the inside <laughs> of it. Yo, it's crazy. I brought my drone out there. I was just shooting drone footage every day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to chop it up and like put it out one day. I have some crazy footage in my life still. I'm not someone that's really braggadocious and like posts my Instagram yeah. stuff, but I do have a lot of stuff that I keep stored, you know? So when time is right, hopefully I'm alive to see it. That's funny. 
I will. I will be. There's a. I've got a picture with um, <laughs> is me and Chad Kruger, okay. the singer of Nickelback. Mm-hmm. Where I have it keeping it for like. Yeah. I just keep it in the archive. You know, I'm just waiting because it's yeah. like someday yeah. I'm gonna show people that and they're gonna be like. I have a picture with Drake in like Austin, Texas, like a, on his um, Club Paradise tour. I have like the first official like OVO Club sweater Paradise on. Tour. Bro, Kendrick and ASAP, bro, crazy. It's crazy to think that those tours happened, you know? Like you think about like old J. Cole tours and old like Kendrick crazy. tours and old like. Crazy. Oh, I just had, you know, do you know Brendan Hugo? Yeah. I had him in like the other day. And yeah, he was I saw me that about episode. The Kendrick. Yeah. Um, the first Kendrick show at Sound Academy, that there was like 80 people or something, or like Crazy. 200 people, and then they like filmed it in a way that it looked like it was like sold out. Yeah. And so public like, blog. So back this is like 20, I don't even know 20. Like, I remember that a time ago. I, I remember like, that. I was blog, in North Carolina. Like, I wanted to go. And blogs were being like, "Yo, it's like yeah. sold out." Kendrick Lamar, first yeah. time in Toronto. He's like yeah. sold out show. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's crazy, Bill. Brendan is a G. He put me on, like, he introduced me to Big Crit and allowed me, there's, like, an old video out there, like, when I was Deep Bones. If you type in Deep Bones freestyle into Big Crit, you'll find it. Whoa. Yeah, some legendary shit. That's crazy. Hard-ass verse, too. Um, I'm probably, like, 16. I want to ask, I, um, do you remember that, the teaser video for If You're Reading This Is Too Late? That came out like before, before the, the cause the surprise drop, but it was like, there was like a teaser video. Fire video. video. I, like, I remember my reaction and like the people I knew, like their reaction to that was always crazy. We we're like, this is like new sound. Mm-hmm. Like this is like new vibe. Mm-hmm. How did you react when you heard that for the first time? I was like, what? This is crazy. Cause it's like, that's, that's another thing where it's like. This is when he said, with my woe. Well, it's from like, yeah, that's I like that, another, like that, the, the message. And maybe not even, the, but even, like, that's not even, you could, you could argue that's not even just the message. That's just like the feeling yeah. that that's like, it carried that far. Yeah. That was crazy. I really love that. That was when Bear Things dropped the day before. Bear Things dropped the day before that clip came out. And then... The video or the song? The song. The song dropped the day before that video came out. And then... um. Then that, that video came out. Well, I don't know. Two different releases, I guess. I don't know. It was just Godspeed. That is so trippy. Yeah, it was. I it was All Star Weekend. I went to New York and I saw Drake and then he's like, say what up, you know. And then I he's like, man, it's like, what did he say? It's like we made the same song or something like that. And I'm like, damn, this is crazy. <laughs> like, yo, this is so crazy right <laughs> we now. We made the same song. <laughs> Like, I don't think you meant it like that, like, you know, but like, I'm yeah, like, I know what you, mean. <laughs> you know, like, yo, this is crazy right now. Like, the world knows woe, then there's like this big article with Fader and all that stuff. Like, to be honest with you, I don't know. How, I don't know. You know how I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what Drake means. You know, I just know who I am. And, you know, everybody knows what I represent. Yeah. Well, you know? and so also it's like, just like, like, I know this, like the guy in the reps up crew named like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like. It's just so much different, you know, but it's cool where people tie things, you know, and they, yeah, what yeah. they wanted it to, to represent. I think what's sick about it is like it's, as a Drake fan, mm-hmm. it's always sick when he pays homage to Toronto or an artist from Toronto mm-hmm. in any way, honestly, like whether it's like, you know, like I remember when Safe and his crew, like back in like 2015, maybe when they all got OVO drawings. You remember that? When all those kids in Regent Park, like he of dropped course. off like tons. You yeah, know? that's fire. Like, that, like in any way, it's always sick when somebody like Drake does that for Yo, Toronto. Yo, man, so it's like, I, trust just, me. That's, I think that's just what's so sick about it. That's the sickest part about I it. I loved it. It was the craziest feeling. Like, honestly, it was. Like, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people looked at me and they wanted me to be mad about it. And yeah, like, yeah. I had nothing to be mad about. Like, I have nothing to be mad about at all. Like, that's amazing. My message is out there, you know, the whole world. So, like, whether he means that or not, like, you know, people associate that, and like, that's just super dope. But I think it's just one of those things that 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 woe and working on excl- working on excellence just seem to connect on so many levels. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, person to person, or mm-hmm. from somebody like that. For sure. I mean, I'm like one of the biggest or from Drake like fans. The shoe, you know, like. Yeah, I'm one of the biggest Drake fans. So for that, for for me in that yeah. moment, like, that was amazing. Like. That song, Know Yourself, is so amazing. Yo, bro, ironically, me and my friend Seti, bro, have a song called Know Yourself that we made, like, years ago. 
like That's like wh- yeah like but no but like there's no there's no possibility yeah, because yeah. no one has this you know yeah. no one has a song it's never been released or anything like that you know so it's just like but it's just like this theme like from your life from way yeah back. bro it's so like, like to see like just the Toronto again. like you know and it's see not slang yeah just all of yeah like tie thing. together and see yeah. how the world recepts to it it's like amazing you know it's just like damn and it's just getting bigger so yeah Shout um out to y'all. fuck I wish we had like another half hour it's funny because it's like i always like i wish this i have to figure out a way to extend this to like a longer format yeah we'll have to just do part two of yaya's pizza i'm about to get a slice (laughs) shout out to yaya's pizza um okay i need two food recommendations okay maybe one from toronto and then maybe one from your travels okay i'll give you two in toronto since we're in toronto Okay, first one is Square Boys on the Danforth, about like Word. Jones and Danforth. It's like a Greek fast foodish kind of spot. You can get like the half chicken dinner with the Sick. Greek salad and the fries, or you can get the chicken burger, hamburger special, Greek Slovaki, Euros on the Pita, all that stuff. Fire. Second would be Pie. It's like a Thai restaurant downtown mm-hmm. on Duncan yep. Street. That is so fire. Oh my gosh. Jeff, the owner of the bro, bro. Shout out to Jeff. He all I shot Growing Crazy in there, actually, the music video. Oh. Yeah, I did, but that's one of my favorite restaurants in the world. Like, I love that Thai food, the green curry, and it comes in a coconut. Mm, oh geez, shit, I'm that's sh- crazy! Fire, fire. Okay. Um. Last thing, who do you think, um, I should have on next? Who would you like to see on the Drew York show? Um, I want to see my bro Jay Glavani. I want to see Ooh. my bro. You know. I think it would be dope to have my bro Lakusa Wo too. He's Michael Bongo. He's like a basketball player and a rapper. Aside sure. from the Wo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you their music in their link. But aside from my Wo artist, I want to see you talk to um, Tyson Nas. It would be dope. He's definitely on my list for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. The Prime Boys. That'd be sick. Jazz Cartier. Uh, Dylan Ponders. He was the first one. You did it with him, right? It was the first one, yeah. Sick. I did a song <laughs> with him on his new album. I, it's sitting in my email, and I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, it's crazy. Hawaii Mighty, or the whole sorori- sorority, you know, Keisha Fresh, Lex, all them. Um, who else? Claremont II? I yeah, like that would be I sick, like, too. I like, to hear I like him, talk, him a lot. You know? And then probably The weekend. Hey. Maybe Nardwar. That's like definitely on my list. Is it, if I can, if I can interview sick. Narwar, I know that I've like done something. Yeah, right now. that would be a sick one. That'd be a sick one still. Okay. Or the guy that made Raptor Foot. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> or Kawhi. No, no, not Kawhi. But Kawhi. <laughs> okay. All right, my bro. Much love. Next Thanks time. for doing this, man. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching the Drew York Show. Until uh, until next time. Yeah. Go get that son of Don, Devante.com. Whoa. Yeah.